Okay, um, welcome to my talk today. My name is uh, Jan Kniewasser. I work as an academic field sales engineer for National Instruments. I'm responsible for, for all our academic customers in Bavaria and Austria, which means uh, we do have field sales engineers who are taking care about a special SIP-based uh, area. And me, I'm taking care of all our academic customers in German Technica und Berufsschule to uh, University of Applied Science and also technical universities. Um, from um, teaching to research, which means a lot of teaching projects where we bring in our soft and hardware combination, a lot of um, research topics where we are close together with uh, different universities um, researching on, on different topics like TU Dresden uh, with a, a topic which is called 5G Now, um, the research on the new mobile standard, uh, mobile communication standard. And uh, this I think is a good uh, topic to, to describe how complex systems um, the last decade are uh, gone. Um, just one decade ago, uh, testing a mobile device was like uh, testing transmit and receive of uh, signals and nowadays we most of us do have a smartphone where the the challenge is to test is the mobile communication beside the video streaming and data streaming the connection to the internet is everything fine and so we have to face different challenges and in my area, I have challenges to equip the, the students and uh, the teachers with the right tools um, to be yeah, that flexible to face all these needs out there. And in the end, our systems uh, will also be or should also be very flexible uh, to combine that. So in this talk, I will uh, give you a short overview about um, the impact of engineering, which is more than less just a talk. Um, NI, National Instruments in Academia, what we are doing, and then we are jumping right into some pro uh, products uh, which I brought, and I will show you different things like LabVIEW, MyDAC, MyRio, and the so-called Virtual Bench. These hardware platforms uh, you will see in action. For the next one hour, I think we can have an interactive part, we, whatever you want to. Um, but I do have some slides, I do combine it with some presentations. In the end, our mission, National Instruments mission is um, to equip engineers and scientists with systems uh, that accelerate productivity, innovation and discovery. And I'm on the starting point. Our CEO, Dr. T, is always says everything starts with academic and that's why we have product marketing teams, product development teams who are developing hard and software components only for academic. And um, I will show you some um, platform-based uh, approaches um, where we face different challenges in different application areas where the glue is LabVIEW in between to have a modular and flexible hardware um, which can be adapted to all the challenges you have in these applications. So for sure LabVIEW is our um, yeah, most or well-known product. Sometimes people asking what is the company LabVIEW doing beside all the software. Um, the company is National Instruments uh, and the product is LabVIEW. Uh, LabVIEW is more than 25 years in, in development time uh, is included and that is what you see and feel sometimes in the programming. So my area of working starts from kindergarten to industry. Uh, why? Because we do have a tight connection with um, products or with companies like Lego. Um, the software you program is graphically because it's for kids. I mean, they sometimes cannot write or read. Uh, they just take blocks, put it together. They are 
exact symbols on it for engine, for a speaker or for microphone. And that is what they know. And that is what they intuitive bring together to then program um, actuators and sensors like it is combined in an NXT Lego Mindstorm robot or the new EV3. So, and starting point uh, kindergarten and different other initiatives like Girls' Day or uh, the first league in the US, um, Jugendforscht uh, in, in Germany is a big one, um, where we see that uh, bringing a graphical environment to children's desks will sometimes um, astonish you a lot because you, you see what they do in, in a very short amount of time with the combination of soft and hardware. Even they do not know anything about programming. So uh, vocational training, this is in Germany called uh, Berufsbildender Bereich. Um, we work uh, together with schools. Uh, we develop with uh, teachers different books where the practical side of life is um, then more included. We are just uh, component deliverers. We give you the software, uh, the hardware, and you show us sometimes um, what, what's possible with these combinations. So um, going from this area and some books to universities, we do have some uh, Lepview Academies, it's called. On site, they train their own students um, till a um, CLAD, Certified LabVIEW Associate Developer uh, Certificate, which is a multiple choice um, exam. We take that and we give them also an, an exam for that in the end. So that they start having a starting point in, in software knowledge about LabVIEW, about their co the combinations between then LabVIEW and hardware. We are researching and we do have different research projects. My big four are TU Vienna, TU Graz, TU Munich for sure, and then the Friedrich Alexander University in Erlangen, um, because my area is Bavaria and Austria. So we're working tight together with them in teaching and research, and then the industry, uh, industry also jumps in because of um, third-party uh, um, yeah, finance, financing. Um, most of the time there is the, the, the interface to my colleagues out there, the field sales guys you know maybe, um, and we're working together to make those an efficient, yeah, an efficient way working with academic customers. So we do have now a short introduction about LabVIEW, about MyDeck, MyRe and Virtual Bench, which are not only academic related, but mostly used in this area. And um, what that means, um, I will show you. So most of the time, if you start in a project, um, you design in your head uh, an a plan to get user inputs, to, to design what, what kind of trigger should start or should initialize a system to start then um, a programming or a, a data acquisition. Then we talk about uh, repeatable um, sessions of data acquisition maybe, of simulation steps, of um, acquisi acquisitions of data, in this case acquire a strain, obtain a frequency, then decide if it's higher than 100 hertz, yes or no. And this plan is developed most of the time before the project starts, hopefully. So in our case, because we do have a graphical development environment, um, the translation into the to the language LabVIEW itself is completely the same. We do have inputs, we do wait for triggers, we initialize and we then have uh, different frames, which is exactly the same as a while loop, a for loop, uh, what you know about programming in general. And we use therefore uh, graphical representatives to, yeah, starting from working with kids 
intuitive, go into research, research project and reuse existing code wherever it comes from. I mean, um, models of computation does mean that you can reuse maybe in, in these cases uh, MATLAB code, that you can reuse CDLLs, .NET assemblies, whatever it is. In this case, LabVIEW is absolutely not closed. It's very open um, to, the, to the area around it. So again, drawing your project means in LabVIEW you, you program it in a very similar way. And um, that is just an analogy uh, to show what data, uh, data flow means. We give inputs um, to our next steps, whatever they do right now. I will show you some examples for that. Um, and then we, we end the project or the program itself. So LabVIEW does not always have to look like LabVIEW. LabVIEW is well known in this, uh, with this style. Sometimes uh, LabVIEW should look like the component you test. Um, and in this case, it's, it's from a car with a navigation in it. Um, we do have uh, speed limitations and so on and so forth that the guy on the, on the, on the PC, on the front panel, um, is working with the same, with the exact same representative of um, HMI, then the real world shows them. So in the back, you, you code your program with different functions and um, different modules and toolkits we provide. So the combination of all that, um, having the front panel, users like it very, uh, very much that they can program uh, very high sophisticated uh, user interfaces um, very fast and then they combine it in the back with sometimes standard functionality which is given native in our mathematics um, uh, libraries but most of the time they use their own yeah, codes, their own mathematics. So in the simplest way of programming LabVIEW, and that is also what I show my uh, students, is you do have the user interface, you do have the block diagram, you do have controls, indicators, and uh, graphs to show what's going on maybe in a so-called simulate signal block. Um, you give a frequency and an amplitude to that simu uh, simulate signal block and then you get out a waveform. So, the strength of LabVIEW is that you see what you, you get what you see. So, given a frequency and amplitude means then in the end, we do have a uh, function generator with an uh, amplitude of one volt and a frequency of 10.1 hertz. Um, this loop here, or this, this frame, means nothing than that it is a while loop and the code within the while loop is executed with a timing of 100 milliseconds um, as long as you do not push the stop button. So and that's it. And that is, as simple as the, the, the example is, that is the strength of LabVIEW. Because I can give that um, slide to anybody and everybody can tell me about what this thing is doing without knowing anything about programming. So again, um, you get what you see. So, but LabVIEW is, is more than just having a simulator or having a function generator, uh, which is then in a capsuled uh, simulation world. It includes timing. You can um, choose where the code should run. Also on a, on a Windows-based system. I don't know if you can see that very good. There is a, is a sign which means processor. You can uh, especially choose the, on a multi-core computer where the code is executed. That means you give the uh, Windows scheduler, you force the Windows scheduler to bring that code which is included in that uh, frame uh, 
um, to, to work on a processor which is with number 0, 1, 2, 3, whatever it is, if it is a quad-core um, um, controller. So I.O. integration in this case is, to, is done by an Express VI. Express VIs are, let me say it like this, you configure then, but you do not program. Um, Express VIs are used to having a great starting point, I will show you. Um, parallelism, I mean, those two frames are parallel to each other. What that means that if you use then maybe FPGA boards, they are in real time and deterministic parallel. They work on a Windows machine in parallel just by drawing the frame. State charts can be included, that is one of our modules. Textual math, may it's just uh, text-based uh, mathematics or you can also use, as I mentioned before, um, MATLAB syntax.m files um, and why not? I mean, combine the, the strength of those two worlds, MATLAB and LabVIEW for I.O. integration and the very, very specified um, mathematics you use or you developed already in, in MATLAB, include it and combine it with I.O. Um, C and HDL code, HDL for those who, for those who do not know, is um, the area where you program FPGAs, FPGA, sorry, and you can call functions, you, you give parameters to the function, you get the calculations back and um, loop it back to your, to your code. And then we do have for sure the simulation side of life, open and closed loop uh, constructs where you can work with. So in general, that is uh, the, the graphical system design and um, to show you real quick what it's all about I give you those two two sides the user interface and the block diagram and I always start with a very simple example I do have uh, two sliders I place it on the uh, user interface I do have um, some indicators so, and uh, you will, you have seen that there are also two representatives of the control and the indicator on the, on the white side. So that means the user interface in, in the end can also be an exe file which is given to a computer where no LabVIEW development environment is running. But in this case, we do have in, inputs and one output. And the easiest case is to maybe just add them so you give those values over here you just make it a little cleaner and then you simulate and add you run the the program and then you will see okay maybe um, maybe 10 is not enough we need more space for our calculations and then it works again so but this is not very handsome if you just click and have a static uh, point of, of doing so that is the point where our our frames came in in this case it's a while loop I just take the loop bring it around my code I add um, a control in this case it is a stop button and this stop button means the code is within this frame executed as long as I do not push or, or as long as the, the stop criteria is not true. Um, now I add some timing to tell those frame um, that every 100 milliseconds the code should be executed and then I push the start button and then it's more handsome to show you the very first example what's going on. So with this simple example I just wanted to show you how, how the, the look and feel is. 
if this is an input on the front panel or an analog input on your programming uh, because of different other options we do have in, in, in LabVIEW, I don't mind right now. Um, for now, I just wanted to show you the, 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 simple, the simple part of it. Any questions so far? Good. So, but we always talk about, okay, it's not only about simulation. We have to be hands-on project-based learning. We have to work with the students. They should have their hands on the signals. And um, then we do not have any hardware they can afford. So we changed that. Um, and the first thing I brought is the so-called MyDAC. DAQ stands for data acquisition. In this case, the My products um, are, uh, we do have uh, as a student version. And um, let's go real quick to some specifications. You can program it. You can program the MyDAC, but you don't have to. What does that mean? Um, we also bring some ready-to-use instruments like a DMM, an oscilloscope and function generator and five others. And they are uh, strict connected to the MyDAC. So with this um, ready-to-use component, the, the students can start uh, with their first experience. It is not, um, it's not uh, everything about those, those uh, um, instruments. It is then go into LabVIEW and program it again. But for a very first starting point, it's a great way to show which, um, which values are interesting for us, uh, which um, numbers are interesting in general if I use um, a microphone as I do it, and where is, uh, the, 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 where is language in, in frequency speaking? I mean, it's not uh, around about 40 kilohertz. Um, but ask some people about where do I find my speak signals, then you will get um, interesting answers. Let me say it like this. So this component is bus powered. The intelligence, and that's important for our next um, hardware components, the intelligence is um, still the PC. You connect it just via USB and then you start. We do have uh, instruments, we do have a built-in digital multimeter, you get the, um, uh, the, the strengths and everything. We do have the audio input, analog input, digital, plus minus 15 volts for the first circuits. And um, that's it. What do we want to see with it? We want to see that people are doing the basic uh, electronic elements. We want to go for signal analysis because then in the end, the uh, LabVIEW helps us to be more open to advanced signal analysis. Um, we want to go to controls, we want to go to base measurements, and we can combine it with our existing toolchain, which means uh, Multisyn and Ultiboard are um, simulating of um, circuits and uh, then building a breadboard, uh, giving it to a, yeah, a company we, I made that with, with very, really, really basic um, experiments, um, serial and parallel uh, connection of, of resistors, a seven segment thing, whatever it is and whatever you can imagine, and let them build it by themselves. So in the end, they have a hardware, they connect it, they do the work with their own hardware, and that is where it starts getting better and better. So this is just one, one option. We offer ready to use examples. I brought also the so-called VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing system. Um, but for now, yeah, for now I, I give you some demo. Additional to that, I will show you some examples coming from um, Finland. They are using the MyDeck as a platform to give it to their students doing their homework, coming back prepared to the study 
and then working based on the the um, the results they got at home. Based on that, they work again in their in their uh, classroom, and that is what. Uh, my name is André Sasberg, and in my heart, I'm a teacher. The students give me the most satisfaction in my work. You, you staying young when you're working with young people. And I was looking for a data acquisition device and then the MyDeck came and then I had a measurement, a lab in a bag and that is why I put it on the book list. You can do more with the MyDeck than just measuring. I use it as a data acquisition device in a course of LabVIEW. MyDeck can also be very well used for doing electronic experiments. In traditional way, I had to build it on a breadboard and use it. That was very time consuming. With uh, national instruments, all of it, uh, time is very efficient now and I can do a lot with it. At home, when I'm using my deck, I can actually interface with other devices and make my own personal uh, laboratory there and in, uh, invent, kind of invent new things and new ideas there. New ideas are born every time. Yeah, it's, a, it's really practical and small. You can learn a lot about technique from books. You can do a lot of simulation, but you know, the reality sometimes is different. And in this way, you can almost check everything you learned. You can check it in reality. And then you are learning, really, because then you need to see how good reality is compared to the theory. How good? How good reality is compared to the theory. That is a, an important part of, of that uh, video. Okay, let's see what uh, happens if I plug it in. Um, as I said, bus powered and then we are just using instruments. Ready to use instruments and those, oh, that's the wrong one. Um, those instruments are something like an arbitrary waveform generator and Bode analyzer and dynamic signal analyzer. I am sure you do not start with uh, students with a dynamic signal analyzer, but my demo is to show you and to show those who are never programmed LabVIEW what it can be. So I start the dynamic signal analyzer and that means um, a soft front panel came up. And this soft front panel is ready to use for the MyDeck in this case. I do choose the audio input because there I plugged in my simple, simple um, microphone. I put, I, I go for the audio input left and then I start, I simply start it. So in this case, there is um, the, the time signal, which is then anything and uh, uh, converted to, to the frequency space. So now the point is, okay, we do have a span of 40K, which we should not need. So I go a little uh, less, only 4K. And then maybe we use a signal which is reproducible. So, I tried it a lot. That's the reason why I can do that. So, um, first of all, I'll show uh, those, um, the students, hey, that is some kind of uh, sine wave and uh, something is on top of it, but what is it? That is the first thing. And then I show, you, uh, show them, hey, there is something going on with the frequency maximum in it, and you can, uh, through signal analysis, uh, extract that. So the, the extraction itself is the FFT and you, you see the, uh, the peak moving. So I also do have a frequency uh, generator as an app. Nowadays we, we use that. Why? Because uh, most of the time then the students are more be or believe believe in that what the app is saying and not not what I'm I'm whistling. So they see the frequency 
and they see that uh, the peak is doing the same on the on the display. So if they if they have seen that, you have to uh, be careful that they do not do everything with it. But um, that is also the interesting part. They start working with it. They start loading frequency generators to their smartphones and and uh, generating signals to acquire it again. And then they go home and do a, uh, an, an analysis about um, knocking on the door. And if you do it in the right way, the the door opens or not. Uh, some just just as an example. So this is an entrance level to start with them working with we're ready to use um, uh, soft front panels and there we do have a lot and as you can see you can add your own which means you program in LabVIEW um, the, the MyDeck you bring that um, user interface or that VI virtual instrument to that list and you start working with that list of different um, yeah, components, instruments. With the, uh, with the ready to use functionality, we are done. The instruments I've shown you. So, but what next? Uh, what is if I wanna build my own circuits or if I wanna use something like this? Um, the vertical takeoff and landing is then a Windows-based control system. I especially mention Windows-based because um, Windows just offers a, a control uh, cycle time of one millisecond if everything works fine. So it means we do have a whole sensor, we do have a magnet, we do have um, a power supply in, uh, as a nine volt uh, battery. And in the end, uh, the vent should uh, be working that much that it is straight. So that is the control uh, in the back. And one of the things we found out is if students or those who want to learn do not see anything about the reaction of the system, if they change some values, then it's not worth uh, pressing the theory in it. Um, and so we do have some ready to use, um, let's say, programs in this case where the, this system can be bought and then uh, used with, uh, with LabVIEW right away. So I start the program and you will see two lines. The one, uh, the yellow line is the, um, where the blue line should go to and I change it like this. For now, it's just my, my manual uh, controller and to be honest it is not that easy okay it, it is doable uh, but to do it manually I can do it also manually by um, turning the vent on it lifts but very very slow so and then where should I stop? So it is, I do it with the students and they should do it by themselves to, to, do, it, to do the uh, control manually. So in the end we find out, okay, it's overshooting and let's go down. Yeah, hmm. so not that easy. Uh, but there's also a PID mode where it goes back to the, uh, to the static um, thing. And then the vent is producing enough power to go to the to the to, um, yellow line. So then, if I change the P, I, and D components or the the, um, the values, then also the student sees what's what's going on with if I'm changing those. So right now I have not the best. Ah, okay. So finally we made it, I think. And it stays static then. So 
that just simple example should show the impact of giving the students or those who learn about PID control the option to change the values online and see what the system is doing is a better way, better understanding of the complete control um, than only thinking about the theory and having it working um, in, in formulas or something. Just as an example for a Windows-based control with the MIDEC and the vertical takeoff and landing. If the Windows-based um, control is not enough and you need um, real-time control, you need uh, a deterministic data acquisition, um, not only fast, but in a very uh, accurate um, step, time step, then you need a real-time system, then you need a real-time controller, and then sometimes you need an FPGA. But should the students learn VHDL, HDL, different tools, from our point of view, no, they should um, expand their knowledge in LeftView that they can work then with real-time and, and FPGA. So we brought also, um, or I brought also a component which is called MyRio. The MyRio is then a real-time, um, is one, is our first representative of our Rio platform, which means Rio is reconfigurable I.O. That means through software, we define what the hardware is doing. And if we want to do have an oscilloscope, then we program an oscilloscope. Or if it should be a function generator, then we program a function generator. But that is the point where I just say, OK, we need that flexibility because the challenges out there are that different. So there is an onboard uh, free access, access accelerometer and we included the Silent Zync chip which I describe a little later. User-defined LEDs, integrated Wi-Fi, um, 40 channels of digital IOs, we do have analog IOs. Again, the stereo, the, the audio inputs as I showed you for the MyDeck. And let me compare it. It is the same. So those experiments who are working for the MyDeck are also working for the MyReal. Um, out of the box you can then use it, but you have to program it. It is different with uh, this, with the um, instrument launcher. There you have to program, but then it's also, I mean, Rio, the architecture itself um, needs a lot more of investigation. The sync chip itself is the heart of it. And uh, traditional implementation of that kind of system is that you do have a processor, a real-time uh, target there. And then uh, over PCI bus, you, the, the FPGA is connected to the real-time um, real part. To the FPGA itself, the IOs are connected. For the sync, and these are three different steps. For the sync, it is included. The sync is a so-called system on a chip. Um, it combines the processor and the FPGA, which means um, the bus communication between those two is way faster and way more performant. And um, then you add your, again, analog, digital IOs, but also custom IOs. Um, the ecosystem for the my Rio is, again, more than only um, put in whatever uh, resistors and something on it. We do have a, a starter kit, an embedded kit. We do have a Megatronic kit. We can add Digiland PMODs. By the way, Digiland is acquired by National Instruments. Um, we do have a connection to Vanier sensors and uh, the Lego sensors, maybe. So there are a lot of options, and there's a lot more to come. Um, Smaller size, higher performance. That is what we were focused on that. Because we start working with the MyRio with a 60, 667 megahertz dual core ARM Cortex A9 processor. For those who do not know, it is not, not that important. For those who know, they know that this thing is high performance. 
uh, Arctic 7 FPGA, 16 DMA, direct memory access channels. And in the end, why does it matter in, in, in education? Because we start with the MyRio, but we end then with our industry leading technology, which is called Compact Rio, and you can see it on our booth at uh, Hall A1. We do use the same technology in our industry related components and we program it the same way, down to the pit. So, demo. Demo means in this case, we are creating a project for the um, MyRio. And I have to plug it in. Then you will see, most of the time we had the the, the, the obstacles on our way that um, some who do not program or not that uh, close to programming itself, network components, they had uh, um, the obstacle to, to get connected to that kind of, of hardware. In this case, we do have a USB monitor which brings a virtual IP address and this um, IP address is then 172, 22 and so on and so forth. And we can um, launch a Getting Started Wizard that brings all of the, those values with it. You can test it, you can name it in a different way, um, you connect it. Um, the Getting Started uh, window is checking the software and then you see, okay, there is something built in, free access accelerometer, um, some buttons, some knobs, whatever it is, a, a user button which is then the LED. Down there we do have LEDs integrated and we do have um, the accelerometer which then means I, um, I can see the 1G uh, which is then 9.8 um, uh, meters second, uh, meter second quadrat, genau. <laughs> So, in this case, I go to LabVIEW and want to show you the frameworks we bring. It's not only, so let me do that real quick. So, starting with, uh, start working with the MyRio means you have to create a project. And most of the time, our project started from scratch. You have to do everything. Um, in this case, we do have frameworks. They are already built. You can have the blank project if you start uh, from scratch. You can have a My Real project. I want to go for this. And we do have some toolkits where, uh, who are very close connected to the um, My Real then. I start with a real-time project, um, which brings the options to uh, work with the accelerometer. You can uh, test all the IOs, you can, I just skip that, you can then really work on a real-time system and I will um, show you how the difference is then between programming it to, uh, with the my deck. So the Project Explorer is then a very essential part of the game because there you will see the connection to an um, IP address based product. There is a window where it is um, deploying some code or better say it is connecting to a real-time target which we, had, we haven't had before because the computer is the intelligence that is just an AD DA converter. Now we do have a PC Windows based, a real real-time controller which is then Linux RT and adapted to that the FPGA and there is um, the whole checking of that. I close it, I'm connected to it. I do have a main program um, which is named with VI virtual instrument. I start that and in the end you will see that there is a deploy process. The code is given to the hardware and now we do have our free access accelerometer again here um, on, on the user interface. Um, 
why we implemented it? Um, the reason is quite simple. If you start and have nothing to, to add or to program, then it's way harder to, to do the first steps. If you do have a built-in sensor, then you use the sensor, you do, um, you do the getting started, which we give with, and uh, you're very close to the first steps. So the first step is not the only thing we want to do. Uh, I will show you some expansions of that. The code itself is quite simple. So what does that mean? That means we do have an initialization. Um, we work a lot with error clusters. Uh, if there is an error from an earlier uh, execution, then it is initialized to zero. You read all the accelerometer data, you bring it to the graph in this case, and then you uh, stop, or oh, wait a second, 10 millisecond timing for that loop, then you reset the MyRio and close everything if no or error occurs. You push the stop button or an error stops the loop. So, um, but to show you that it is um, a real-time application on the target, I will add some functionality, which means if there is on the set axis a value bigger than 2G, there the, the MyRio LEDs should, sorry, where is it, LED? The MyRio LEDs should go on simply. So, and in the end, that's it. Again, the front panel. I save that program. It's deployed to the target. And then let's see, set axis is back and forth. And I don't know if you can see it. If it just goes higher than 2G, then the LEDs are blinking. Yeah? So, but where's the test about the program is running on the target? That is the test. I just take away the, um, the USB connector. Then for sure the visualization is done but the program is still running. Oh, yeah. The program is still running. It is down on the processor. And think about what we've done. We programmed the real-time target. We brought code to it without having any idea of the Linux RT. We just programmed it. We um, programmed um, a signal analysis about uh, um, um, a maximum value and then a reaction from the system just by doing this and that is the strength the, the strength of LabVIEW and the combination and integration of our hardware into LabVIEW so in terms of time I think um, these are just uh, some tastes of our hardware. I will um, go back to the slides and show you some additional slides to, to that guy here. It's the, the latest hardware in our, in our area. Oh, wait. One, uh, one thing, one thing I, I must show you. We do have a student design contest every year. This year we had 3,250 um, projects from all over the world and the winner is coming from the ETH uh, Zurich and I must show you the video. The brain of the, the whole project is the My Rio again and inspired by nature they built a robot. Just a, <laughs> just a
just a short teaser, but um, that was a student project doing half a year um, a complete underwater robot who is turning like you've seen it, who is controlled by that little guy and um, some specs about it. I just jump real quick uh, through. They started with a prototype based on Lego Mindstorms and LabVIEW. They went down the road to that to that guy who test who is tested in the in the mid sea, and it includes LabVIEW and the MyRio. And just to make sure that they told us it would never uh, happen if they couldn't uh, work with with LabVIEW. We trained them for sure. Training is always needed, but to establish that in that amount of time, that was absolutely astonishing. And they won the Student Design Award. They, um, yeah, they presented it in front of 4,000 of our customers in Austin, Texas. And uh, that was a huge success for the Central European region. And um, the video is coming. So going real quick to the um, virtual bench, a normal um, test bed is looking like that. You do have a, a digital multimeter function generator, whatever it is on your desk. Um, but we wanted to summarize it and bring it together and have it as a plug and play instrument. And the result is the virtual bench. The virtual bench is equipped with all these five um, essential instruments, mixed signal oscilloscope, uh, with a logic analyzer, it is. It brings a digital I/O, uh, programmable DC power supply, digital multimeter, and function generator. But for sure, we do have here basic specifications. The high-end modules you will find in our Peaks I equipment. This is a starting point where you can work with, where you get all the um, BNC connectors, the the cables, and everything but just see it as an entrance level. But the combination, um, I asked for feedback from our customers and they asked, they told us, okay, the size, the, simply the size um, compared to the, the, the rack and stack of five instruments is, is one benefit. Another benefit is that you will get um, ready to use, again, soft front panels who are working like the, the hardware is uh, is described and I will show you the, the, um, the soft front panel. Here we do have and every one of you can download it and use it in a demo mode. You don't have to have the hardware but you can have the look and feel of the, the software. Um, you do have the oscilloscope, the function generator, digital multimeter, power supply and digital I.O. You can have measurement um, measurements within that oscilloscope, um, you can share configurations of that uh, component and this surface you see here is also available for iPad as a free downloadable app because that guy here has uh, Wi-Fi. So if you are interested and more interested about that, uh, join us on booth A1 317 and uh, my name is Jan Kniewasser. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please let me know if you do have any questions. Um, I'm here for any information exchange. Thanks a lot.